Hi, I'm Robin Worley, welcome to Lenscraft. In last week's video, I demonstrated how to use the Quick Mask tool to refine a selection. This week, I want to show you the Refine Selection tool, which you can use when the Quick Mask method isn't working well enough. As before, I'll be using Affinity Photo, but again, you'll also find similar tools in Photoshop. Let's look at this example image where I want to select the sky, but not the trees and hillside. When I try to use the selection brush like in the previous video, I find I can't make a good enough selection. Look at the areas where you can see the sky between the leaves. The selection brush can't select these unless I click on each individual area. A better alternative is to use the flood select tool. This has a contiguous option in the toolbar which I can turn off and on. When it's turned off, it will select the sky between the leaves, but unfortunately it then selects other areas that I don't want it to. But we can improve this selection performance by reducing the tolerance and using the flood select in the add mode. By making a few selections in the sky, we can achieve a reasonable selection overall, although it still isn't accurate in a lot of areas. If I turn on the quick mask, you can see quickly some of the problem areas. This is when using the refine selection tools can help. I can access the tools by clicking the refine button in the context sensitive toolbar, but you can also use the select menu and choose refine edges. By default, the refine selection shows a red overlay covering the areas you haven't selected. Using this overlay, I can already see some problem areas. But if I switch to the black matte option, these are more obvious. Now I can see quite a few selection problems that we need to fix using the refine selection tools. The first thing to realize that a lot of people miss is that these default settings are already working on the selection. If I click apply now, it will apply these, but if I click cancel, I'll return to the original selection. A common mistake is to open the dialog and think the selection is fine and so then click cancel. Now what you're seeing is the selection I made originally with the default settings in Refine Selection applied to it. The first of these is the Matte Edges option. This helps the software to identify and follow edges, which is important if you're editing a photo with a lot of fine detail. The other setting is the Border Width, which is currently set to 10% by default. If I make this wider, it expands the area where Affinity is checking for edges. You can see this as a thick border around the edges of the selection when I move the slider. It can be tempting to increase this, but then Affinity starts to detect edges where you don't want it to. Usually I find that it's better to make an accurate selection first before using Refine Selection tools. Then in Refine Selection, I can reduce the border width setting rather than increasing it. Usually a narrow border width helps to improve an already accurate selection. The other slider we can use to fine tune the selection is the ramp slider. This can soften or sharpen the transition between selected and unselected areas, as well as expanding and contracting them. Watch what happens when I move the slider to the right. The selection becomes vague and soft, but if I move the slider to the left, it becomes better defined. By making these simple adjustments, I've improved the accuracy of the selection overall and fixed a lot of the problems. So far, the adjustments we've made to the selection have been global, but it's also possible to make localized improvements to fix the remaining problems. I can do this using the adjustment brush in the lower section of the dialog. I'll start by using the brush to paint the background. Affinity calls the unselected area of the image the background, so I can use this mode to paint over areas that I don't want to select. When I paint over and then release the mouse button, Affinity uses the new information from the adjustment brush to improve the selection. Now, I'm going to switch back to the red overlay because it makes it easier to see what's happening along edges of the selection. Over on the left of the image, I can see an area where the distant hill wasn't selected. Ideally, I want the selection here to expand down to the tree line. To fix this, I can switch to using the foreground mode with the adjustment brush. Watch carefully what happens as I paint over this area and then release the mouse button. Now 
Notice that even though I didn't paint over the trees, the selection expanded to meet them. Finally, I'm going to switch back to the black mat to check some of the fine details. Here I can see that some of the branches and the gaps between the leaves weren't selected quite as cleanly as I'd like them to. I can fix this using the matte option with the adjustment brush and then paint around these areas. Using the matte option with the brush causes affinity to refine the selection edges in that area. This is usually sufficient to allow affinity to clean up the selection. As you do this you may find that you need to vary the brush size and paint over the area a couple of times. When I've finished refining the selection, I can apply the changes. Once the matching ants appear again, I'll check around the image to make sure there aren't any problems that I've missed. Finally, I'll switch to the Channel Studio panel and save the selection as a mask for future use. Both this refined selection and the quick mask video from last week are just a couple of the topics I cover in my upcoming book called Affinity How To. The book will be available from January and if you want to know when it's launched, sign up for the newsletter on my website. I'll add a link to the page in the YouTube video description. I hope you found today's video helpful. I'm Robin Worley, you've been watching Lenscraft, I'll see you soon for another video.